In the 19th century, bridges did one thing with spectacular consistency. They collapsed. One out of every four, into streams, into canyons, into the ocean. A lot of people in Brooklyn and New York were just waiting for Roebling's steel monster to plunge into the drink too. And on one fateful day, sooner than anyone expected, it seemed like they were gonna be proven right. The gloom and doom predictions sound pretty silly today. Considering the bridge has been a rock solid fixture of New York for 130 years. We assume that's because it's made of only the finest materials available at the time. Sorry, untrue. The unsettling fact is that the Brooklyn Bridge's massive cables contain 221 tons of defective steel wire. The responsible party is a slick Brooklyn businessman named J. Lloyd Haig, who wins the contract to make the bridge's steel. Just a slippery sort of character, but charming enough to really persuade people that um, you know he was gonna do a good job on manufacturing the wire at a good price. But Haig is out to get rich by cutting corners. The steel wire he produces is too brittle and breaks easily but he's cooked up a way to fool Washington Roebling's team. Haig got the contract based on some wire samples that he had had another company manufacture and somehow managed to manufacture enough good wire that he was able to pass the inspection that was very insisted upon by Roebling. Of course, Haig makes sure hardly any of the approved wires makes it to the bridge. Haig worked out a way to have the wagon full of inspected wire take a detour on the way to the bridge, move into a, another warehouse, be quickly unloaded and reloaded with defective wire, which he would then take to the bridge. The good wire was taken back to be reinspected on the next wagon load. So therefore, the inferior wire was put into the bridge. And only after it had been put into a significant amount of the cables uh, did anybody discover it. 